Hey, today in the secret kitchen, I'm making bread, and this is not just any ordinary bread. This is a bread that is packed with olives, cheese, and all kinds of herbs and spices, uh, Kalamata olives, uh, halloumi cheese, something entirely different. This is going to be so delicious. We can't wait to eat it, and I'm going to make it for you right now. Welcome to Secret Kitchens of New Jersey, and today we're going to make some bread. I, I know you, my bread videos have been very popular with you, and I thank you for that. This is going to be a little bit different. So first of all, this is going to be a slow rise bread. This is going to be a 24 hour rise, or eight, 12, 18 to 24 hours, not not 24 necessarily. So we're, we would make the dough in advance, and we would bake the bread tomorrow, the next day. This particular bread is going to have uh, olives and cheese. It's really going to be absolutely delicious, something a little bit different. And I've decided, I'm using Kalamata olives. Of course, you can use any kind of olives you have. But for an extra good treat, I'm using some halloumi cheese. For anyone who doesn't know what halloumi cheese is, well, Google it. Halloumi, I put it up on the screen so you can see what it is. So halloumi cheese is actually, this is a product of Cyprus. This is, um, it's kind of, it says right on here, the traditional grilling cheese of Cyprus. So if you've never had grilled halloumi, boy, you are seriously in for a treat. Uh, this cheese actually holds its shape under pressure of heat. So it's going to kind of stay kind of solid in our bread, which is going to be very nice. It's got kind of a briny, salty flavor. It's really delish, but we'll get back into that later. All right, so let's start with the basics and, of course, all of the instructions and whatnot down below in the, in the uh, description. I've got four cups of flour. I'm using all-purpose. You can use bread flour if you want to. I'm just going with the all-purpose right now. So I've got two teaspoons of kosher salt. And I'm going to kind of season this uh, flour up a little bit because we're making a very uh, savory kind of a bread here. I've got uh, about a heaping teaspoon of dried oregano. And let's see, I've even got a teaspoon of uh, garlic powder. All right, so I want, I want to get some flavor in here. And let me give this all a mix before I add my yeast. And I've got about a half a teaspoon of instant yeast. I keep my yeast in, in the freezer, so I know it's always good. All right, so let me give this a good mix. All right, so that is that. And then I've got, we've got some water. This is just room temperature water. Doesn't have to be a, a specific temperature for this. So I'm going to start with adding about a cup and a half of water. I'm going to keep some, uh, a little bit more. I'm going to keep some water in here because I know I'm going to need more. And we're going to mix this up. All right, so I know I need more water, but I don't want to add, oh, I'm really starting to activate the flavor, the, the smells of the garlic. It smells great. All right, so I definitely need more water. But the thing is, I'm at, whoop, almost flour overboard. Don't do that. So I'm adding a little bit at a time because I don't want this to be soaking wet. All right, we're just going to keep going till we get everything nicely hydrated. All right, still looks like we need a little bit more water. All right, I'm going to switch to my spatula because I want to get all of the, um, the flour off the sides. All right, so we do need a little bit more water still. So I still have a little bit here, and I'm just adding a little bit at a time because I don't want it to be, again, soaking wet. It's not, we want this to be hydrated, but not, okay, this is looking a lot better. Okay, this looks good to me. So I don't see any big chunks of um, unhydrated flour. I've just got, um, a nicely hydrated ball of dough 
smells great and that's it you can see it's it's not super wet you know you're not it is it is tacky and sticky but I didn't really have to knead it or do anything with my hands all right so that's what I'm ending up with all right so next step is I'm going to uh, cover this up you can use, uh, of course, uh, any you know plastic film and whatnot, and this is going to just get tucked away for let's say 12 to 18 hours. You can go up to 24 hours. That's fine too. You want to put it in a warm area of your house, not in an area, say, where the air conditioner is blowing on it. Typically, I put this in my oven, my unlit oven. And I just let it stay there because it's warm and there's no draft, all right? So I naturally, I have a swap for you. We can't keep you waiting 24 hours. So let me just tuck this away and I'll get my other one out, all right? I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back with you. And this is the, one, this is the bread that has been um, sitting around since yesterday. It's probably about 20-ish hours. And let me just kind of show you. I'll show the camera. Jim, you got that? All right, you can see it's nice and bubbly. It's uh, got all these beautiful gluten strands going on there. I can see the flecks of the oregano in there. Okay, so here's what I want to do. Now, I told you this is going to be a... Um, we're using... What are we using? We're using some cheese. We're using some olives. I'm just kind of deflating this and getting this... Uh, into the center of the bowl here. And unfortunately, I don't have another glass bowl, but I will show you what I'm gonna do. All right, so this halloumi, which is, this is about eight ounces or so. Not that you have to adhere to these exact proportions, and you certainly don't have to use halloumi. You can use whatever you like. In fact, if you only wanna do olives, that's okay too. But I went ahead and I cubed up all the halloumi it's um, a very firm cheese, and I have about, I don't know, about six or eight ounces also of Kalamata olives, which I also just chunked up. Again, uh, you don't have to be super precise here. It doesn't, you know, it's not going to matter. And I've got some of the oil that these were cured in, because I thought it would be really good in the bread. And you know what? Just because... I had some mozzarella cheese left over that I've already um, that's already been grated. I did this all earlier. I'm just going to put all of this in here. And I'll show you what we're going to do. And we're going to take the halloumi. And I'm going to take a bunch of the mozzarella. Well, why not? Let's just let's just go crazy. All right. So what we're doing now is we're we're kind of mixing this all up together. All right. I think the best way to really do this, now that I see this, is just to get your hands in there. And I want to get as much of this, um, the olives and the cheeses and whatnot, incorporated into my dough. So now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take some flour on this board. See, in previous uh, doughs that we've done, you didn't have to get your hands dirty at all. This one you do. All right, so let me use my, my dough scraper. Let's get this out of here. Okay, whoops. All right, so just forming this, getting all of this nicely mixed together. All right, so now what I want to do, okay. Oh, this is going to be it's going to be awesome. That's all I can say. So, let me show you what I have here. <clears throat> Sometimes I do like to form the bread into loaves of bread, sort of baguette style. And I have this. I've had this for years. It's well used. I've actually got two of them. Get it on Amazon. Not a big deal. Not that you have to do this. You could put it and I've got this on a piece of parchment paper. Not that you have to use this. You can actually just go ahead and put it right on the parchment paper. I'll show you what we're going to do. Let me divide this in half. Again, it doesn't have to be exact. It's not, a, not an exact science here. So what I want to do, because I don't want the bread to stick, 
Even though allegedly this is non-stick, sometimes I have found that the bread can stick a little bit and then it's a bit of a pain to get it off. So I've got some neutral oil, in this case it's avocado oil, and I'm just going to brush both of these sides and that will make it easier for me to get the bread out of here when it's done. All right. If you have, if you want to use um, a spray, you can you can certainly do that as well. All right. So here's what we're going to do. Let's form these into two loaves. It's bursting at the seams here, isn't it? Which I take as a good thing. I'm just going to give it a little more. All right. We're forming it into kind of rough loaves. This is a very rustic kind of a bread. You don't have to worry about being super precise. I know that the cheese and the olives are sticking out. That's all part of it. Right in here, like so. Can you do that in the center? Yep, let me move, let me move this over so that you can see it on the camera. I just put it right in here. And um, getting a little crowded here. Let me do this one next. Again, just forming it into a rough loaf. All right, like so. All right, you see what I have here? All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover these with a, a towel right here. And we need to let this rest. I'm going to let this rest about 40 minutes before it's ready to... Uh, olive overboard there. I'm going to let it rest about 40 minutes. It'll puff up a little bit more. Uh, the dough will get more relaxed and I'll get more relaxed and then this will go in the oven. I'll show you what it looks like when it's ready to go in the oven, okay? All right, so the bread was resting for about 40 minutes and um, <clears throat> here it is. There it is. So what we're going to do now is I've got a serrated knife. I'm going to put a couple of slashes in the bread. Now the reason we do this, first of all, there's well there's two good reasons. There's a decorative element, but when bread is cooking it oh, I don't want to be gesturing. When bread is baking, it gets it will um, you will get some natural cracks in it, and by creating the cracks with the knife, I, I sort of have a control about where where it's going to crack. So I'm going to get this in the oven. My oven has been preheating to 425. My oven runs hot, otherwise I would have used 450. But I'm using 425. It's going to go in the oven for like 30 minutes and or until it's nice and golden and beautiful. Now what I'm going to do, I have a little trick for you. So um, obviously this is my home oven and you can see in the picture I've got up there, I put a, a stainless steel um, <clears throat> pot, a uh, pot or pan, frying Sorry. pan, saucepan in the, in the very bottom of the oven. It's been preheating along with the oven and I'm going to put the bread towards the top on the upper rack. I am going to dump a cup of ice into that saucepan. It's going to create a lot of steam and that's going to help get a nice crust. That's an optional step, but I like to do that. All right, so let me get the bread in the oven. I'll show you what it looks like when I take it out in 30 minutes, okay? Okay, the bread is done. It was in the oven for 30 minutes. I took it out. I had to let it cool for at least 15 minutes or so. And look at this. I do want to share something with you. So this is, I have two of these. These are French baguette pans and I get these on Amazon and I will put a link so that you, if you want to get one of these, you can do that. So a little tip, all right? So I use these all the time, but I do want to say on this particular bread, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's cheese and olives that are oozing out. This has holes in it, and the truth is it made it a little tough to get these off the pan, even though I oiled it. So here's my tip for you. If you want to use a baguette pan, which I love because I love the look of it, I would line this with parchment paper, and then you won't have a problem. Or the other thing is just to put it right on a sheet pan. Either way, you won't have the problem of releasing it like I did have a little problem off camera. 
But having said that, I cannot wait to show you what these things look like. And let's take one and dive into it. It's still warm. Oh my God. All right, look at this. I mean, here's a piece of halloumi right here. Mm. The halloumi keeps its shape, but it gets a little bit charred, and the olives on the outside got a little bit charred. Honestly, they're delicious. But, you know, I want you to see inside. You can see the chunks of halloumi. This is an end piece. Let's, let's cut this and see what we got here. This doesn't need anything. It's that, it's that good. Mmm. I don't even know where to begin. All the brininess from the olives and there's a, some saltiness as well in the halloumi. Um, you've got these chunks of halloumi because it doesn't break down and totally melt. It's crusty. It's nice and soft on the inside. But if you like olives, you must try this olive bread. Really. This is good. We can't wait to get off camera so we can dive into this thing. Mm-hmm. Hey, we'll see you next time on Secret Kitchens of New Jersey. Until then, please like and subscribe and get in the kitchen and cook. Cook this olive, bake this olive and cheese bread. You will thank me.